So this is the uh, Heritage Streetcar in Little Rock, Arkansas. This is the uh, end of the line uh, near the President Clinton Center. And near the Heifer International Center over there. Actually behind us is the Clinton Presidential Library. As you can see that this is not a turning loop. This is actually um, a single end terminus for the streetcar line. I see they put some um, barrels at the end, make sure the streetcar doesn't go too far. It's either filled with sand or perhaps even water. When the next streetcar comes in, it uh, will have two different uh, trolley poles on top. And I'm assuming that it will disconnect one trolley pole and connect a, the second trolley pole so that it, it can drive back out which means it, connect, it has uh, controllers at both ends. Speaking of which, looking down the road, there's a streetcar coming in. So we'll soon see this process in action. And notice that the streetcar runs on the curb lane at a relatively slow pace compared to cars but it's not obstructing the cars at this location. In other places, like in the downtown section, it does run in the same lane as cars, but here it just, it's not in the way of cars or bicycles. See, it's called the Green Line. And there is a two trolley poles I was talking about. See the trolley pole at the end? That'll be lowered. And the trolley pole at the front which will then become the back, will then move forward. You can see the trolley pole at the back is going in and up and it's connecting to the wire. And the front trolley pole will now come down as he reverses direction. Hello there. operation. So this is again is the end of the line of the green line at the uh, Heifers International Center across from the Clinton Presidential Library. They have a standard simple shelter here. This is uh, not a turning loop this is a terminus at a uh, single track. They have containers of sand here placed at the end. I'm assuming it's sand because the, uh, the lid says Big Sandy. So, the streetcars come in, they stop at this point, and the streetcars have uh, trolley poles at each end. They have um, driving positions at front and rear. In fact, there is no front and rear. When you operate the, the trolley at, at one end, that automatically becomes the front. So when the streetcar comes in, the driver position it would be facing towards the uh, barrels. The seats also uh, are, uh, appear to be, uh, be able to switch from one end to the other, so everyone can be uh, facing the direction of the streetcar. Then when the streetcar comes into the station, the uh, 
operator changes the direction of the trolley pole, so the trolley pole will be at the rear, and then he moves to the front and then operates the streetcar from the front. So this negates the uh, necessity of having a, a streetcar loop. So, for example, here, if they had a streetcar loop, they would have to have a much wider uh, bit of uh, real estate in order to turn the car around and then come back to the point. Here. It's, it's a choice uh, of operating your streetcar. So, as you notice in the, in the previous video, it was very quick for him to change the trolley poles. Less than a minute, no big deal. And when you're at the end of the line, you always factor in uh, extra time anyways. So the uh, Little Rock Heritage Streetcar System is, of course, based on replicas of heritage streetcars. You notice that the um, a little bit of grease and oil here, located where the streetcar stops at its uh, terminus at the Heifer Center, across from the Clinton Presidential Library. Oh, and this is nice. I didn't notice this before. Up on the pole here, it tells you when the next streetcar is coming. So we see a blue line in 8 minutes and 28 seconds. So. If you're waiting for your next streetcar, called the Metro Streetcar, you know how long you can wait around here or do something else and come back and catch your streetcar. So streetcar systems are known for having unsightly overhead wires. About the only place where a wire really becomes noticeable is, is at uh, curves. On a curve, you need to have much more wires, supporting wires, tension wires to hold the trolley wire in place. So th this is where it becomes noticeable. So if you have many um, turns in your city on a, on, your, on a proposed streetcar line that you want to build, that's something you have to consider. However, once you get away from a turn and get onto normal straight street running systems, you'll see that the uh, the, street, the overhead wires actually become less of an issue now. In fact, they're actually hard to see. I would not call the, these overhead wires to be any sort of visual problem whatsoever. They're quite widely spaced apart, and they're, all, they're hanging over the side of the street. You notice also that the, in this place, the streetcar is running on a curb lane so it's not in traffic. That is uh, in contrast to many of the traditional streetcars which ran in the curb lane and kept, and uh, no, they, sorry, they uh, did not run in the curb lane, they, they rode in the driving lane in the center of the street with the same lane as cars. And that caused a lot of problems because every time a streetcar would stop in the center of the street, the cars behind it had to stop as well. And any car in a curb lane could not pass either because they would have to uh, wait for people to get on and get off the streetcar safely. By operating your streetcar, heritage uh, streetcar or modern light rail system, by utilizing the curb lane as opposed to the center lane, when the streetcar operates, it does not uh, block traffic in, in the middle of the street. Also, when the streetcar stops in a curb lane to pick up and drop off passengers, cars in the center lane do not have to stop. Now this allows your traffic to flow much more freely. In the center part of uh, Little Rock, I'll show later on, uh, the streets are not wide enough to utilize the curb lane and the streetcar still runs in its traditional center lane position, which does, of course, slow down traffic. Now, they had, a, of course, you have a choice of taking away parking from traditional main streets and allowing the streetcar to run in that curb lane, and that's a choice that any city would have to make. By doing so, I'd like I just mentioned, when you run the streetcar on, on the curb lane, you keep the center lane open and traffic flows better. Traffic does not have to stop when the streetcar picks up and drops off passengers. However, all those merchants along those main streets lose on-street parking. So you have to decide which is more beneficial. So I just noticed on this small little display board, there's actually two uh, streetcar lines coming here. We have the blue line in two minutes, and we have the green line in six minutes. Interesting. Okay. 
So I only have to wait two minutes for a streetcar to come here. And here comes our next streetcar. Coming up to the end of the line at uh, Heifer Center, across from the Clinton Presidential Park. As mentioned previously, the streetcar in this area runs in the curb lane. And you can see bicycles are going across. You can see bicycles go easily go across the streetcar track. It's not a problem at all. I'm going to get on a different position over here so I can get a good view of the uh, trolley poles being changed. Here we go. Rock Region Metro. Metro Street. That's is now the front. He's coming into the station. Now we got a good number of people on the trolley. That rumbling noise that sounds a bit like a motor is actually the air compressor. Those are air assisted brakes on this uh, replica of a heritage speaker. The driver, um, I have not read the streetcar yet, the driver appears to be flipping over the seats so they actually uh, will face the direction of travel so you don't have to sit backwards when the streetcar is going. You see people are changing position now. See a lot of people seem to be staying on the streetcar, I guess they're going for the ride itself. And there's the operator going to, which was the front, is going to what will now be the back of the streetcar. Hi. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Thank you. So he's raising the trolley pole. He's putting it onto the wire. See, it's a very simple operation. It's going to be the spool there takes up the slack to keep the proper tension. It's properly done, but you can notice, see, there's the... Um, controller mechanism at uh, this end of the, the right end of the streetcar, which was the driving end. This is now going to be the trailing end. And at this end, now he's lowering the trolley pole because now this is going to be the front of the streetcar. And again, it's, 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 it's hooked into place right here. And now they're all, now he's at the front of the streetcar. Then we just close the door. And you notice again too, there's streetcars on either side, so, uh, streetcar doors on, on both sides of the streetcar. And because it's a double ender streetcar, that allows it to uh, operate on both sides of the street. So now I'm going to change direction, and he's now on the right hand side. Now the doors will operate from the right hand side. And off he goes. Very simple. So when he left, of course, we have the uh, double track here. So now he, when he comes out, he goes onto the track on this side of the street. And now he's on the curb heading towards downtown. talking to previously and he gave me a little toot, which is nice. The remainder of this video is comprised of still pictures. 
Here we see a group of cyclists crossing over the streetcar tracks here. They had no problem in doing so. The streetcar uh, tracks are laid in concrete. Notice that the road itself is asphalt to the left. Here's a, a long view of the road showing the overhead streetcar wires. It's not unattractive. Here's the sidewalk beside the street and you notice that the sidewalk is separated from the streetcar tracks with uh, some small trees. This is the river market area of Little Rock. Quite similar to, in purpose to the market area in Ottawa. Again here are the uh, overhead wires at the uh, curves where the streetcar track goes from one street to uh, another at an intersection. If you don't like curves uh, producing these type of overhead wires, you can always rem remove the wires at the curves and have the streetcar run on batteries. That's an option. Here's an example of uh, the uh, streetcar overhead wires being supported by various uh, in-place structures such as lamp posts, or even here uh, the traffic lights are actually have a boom on it to support the streetcar wire. Here's another intersection showing uh, a curve and again more wires. Here's a picture of the uh, Gomaco Bernie trolley that's uh, going through the river market area. In that previous picture it had just come across the bridge from North Little Rock. This is still uh, Little Rock. This is the business district. A lot of hotels are located around here. Their uh, opera house, their state capital is very close by. And you notice that the uh, streetcar does not interfere with on street parking. In this location, the streetcar is running in more of a traditional center of street location. Here we see a bulb out for a streetcar stop. You notice that the uh, sidewalk extends out into the street to make it easier for passengers to get on and off the streetcar. This is just an example of a street being made more pedestrian friendly in Little Rock. And this sign is basically explaining the purpose of that street. This is North Little Rock. This is uh, obviously across the river from Little Rock. Around some of the streetcar stops, they put uh, the map of the streetcar route. They also put all the interesting tourism locations like restaurants and bars and, and other things that a tourist would be interested in. This is the streetcar coming across the Arkansas River from Little Rock into North Little Rock. The streetcars have priority control signals so they can uh, be met with a green light as they approach an intersection. Here we see a little uh, streetcar stop. Again, this is North Little Rock, the main street. Here the road is fairly wide, so the streetcar is um, in the second lane. It's not actually occupying the center lane. So this means that uh, it can stop without sto stopping the traffic on the uh, main street itself. Here's a nice little flowery picture. Yes, the flowers were out, and you notice uh, the trees were full bloom in Easter in Arkansas. Here's another picture of, oh, here's a picture of the inside now. You see beautiful woodwork that uh, Gomeco makes, or Gomaco, however you, you pronounce the company. This is our driver here, Kim Burney. He uh, took us for a wonderful ride around the uh, city. Another video we're going to show uh, him actually doing a complete tour, and he's going to narrate the, uh, the system for us. This is the streetcar barn. It has been expanded since it was first built. I estimate it could probably hold prop, perhaps up to 10 streetcars by looks of it. It also has a really uh, good uh, pit for doing maintenance on the streetcars. They currently have a fleet of five streetcars. Three are uh, traditional uh, manual uh, controllers and they have two streetcars with modern electronic uh, controllers. 
again these are different views of the streetcar barn in North Little Rock and that is the end of this video of the view of the Little Rock trolley system. This is Michael Kostjuk.